How many of you guys either live in North Carolina right now or were born in North Carolina? Just raise your hand. All right, that's a lot of people. That's nice. So now let me ask you, who was first in flight? Anybody, just, just say it out loud. Actually, it's bugs. Bugs are first in flight. Uh-huh. There were dragonflies in the air hundreds of millions of years, billions of years, actually, before the Wright brothers were here. But still, it's pretty cool. What do you think about when you hear the word insect? Do you think of small, nasty little critters that just live to pester and annoy you? Do you think of how tiny and insignificant a little bug is? Or do you say, hey, is that a Campanitis castaneus worker? Or is it an ant from the Formica pallida fulva group? Well, the truth is that many people actually view insects like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't really like them. And I believe that the main reason for this misunderstanding are general fear or dislike towards bugs is because they're small and not many people know about them. And there's also a few bugs, like bed bugs, that are kind of annoying, but um, a few bad bugs just ruin the entire thing for all of the other incredible insects on the planet. And once people really start looking at them and learning about them, opening up their minds to the incredible world of the little guys in our world, we can really um, start to notice how amazing insects are. And just to put that into perspective, 80% of all animal life is comprised of insects. So think that 80% of all the birds, um, lizards, just everything out there, 80% of that is just made of bugs. And it's not just the individual count, it's also species-wise. There are 70% of all animal species on the planet are also comprised of insects. Insects as a whole, they have like around 10 quintillion individuals. And that's a ton of bugs. These facts must make it pretty certain that insects are the most successful group of animals on the entire planet, probably even more than humans themselves. But this brings up a whole new question. What is the most successful kind of insect? because there are so many to choose from. It could be beetles with their incredible amount of biodiversity. So many different species of beetles out there. Um, it could be dipterans, dipterans or flies with their extremely fast reaction times and seemingly endless populations in your kitchen during the summer. Well, here the truth is that none of these insects even come close to how successful the order of Hymenoptera is. Hymenoptera includes ants, bees, and wasps. And especially ants are the most successful um, kind of Hymenopteran. What makes ants and bees, wasp hornets, this successful? Well, it's called eusociality. And the biologically programmed mindset to not really care about your individual self and instead work for the benefit of a queen, of a colony. Eusociality in ants is where the worker is there and the worker, like most animals, where most animals try to get food for themselves, um, try to breed for themselves, to spread um, their own prosperity and their own genes. Well, the thing is that an individual worker ant, she doesn't really care about herself. She cares about the benefit of the colony and only wants the colony to thrive. And she'll put, she'll put down her life for that. Um, most animals don't really do that. But ants, it's programmed in their brain just to not care about themselves. So ants come in a lot of shapes, colors, sizes, many varieties. And even though all ants are so, so diverse, they all employ you sociality as a strategy. And in fact, being you social has become so intertwined with ant society that they probably can't even survive. Even if they re got enlightened, went out into the real world, and started saying, hey, let me think for myself. I'll stop serving you, queen. But if that happened, the worker would most likely die because your sociality is a core part of ant life. And let's take a genus of ants called Phaedoli for a second. And here is a species called Phaedoli rhea. And Phaedoli ants are known for their exceptionally large heads. That guy over there looks like a bobblehead. He's probably thinking about a lot of stuff right there. <laughs> But the thing about Phaedoliria is that the major actually have so, so many muscles in their head, which they use to attack other ants and defend the colony. So if that guy, he reached enlightenment, and he went out into the real world um, trying to find a job or something, um, he would probably die really quickly because his head is just too bulky to collect food properly. Like, imagine being a human with humongous arms. Like, you can't grab anything. Your arms are big for punching. That's kind of like um, what the Phaedoliria major is. And the same actually goes for the minor. The minor has... Um, a smaller head, um, so it can't really defend itself, but it's really efficient at collecting food. So if he, she reached enlightenment, she would go out and then also not be able to protect herself. And that's why when both of these ants, or all of these ants are together in a colony, they start to strengthen each other's strengths, and their weaknesses are kind of backed up by each other. 
So all of these aspects in ant society really make these incredible creatures so, so successful in their environment. Um, and if you're starting to think, hey, living life as an ant might be pretty sweet. The truth is that, like I said many, many times, the individual does not matter. It's the colony that matters. You don't matter if you're an ant. Um, we don't care if you like die. It's just there's more to replace you. So maybe it's not such a good idea to become an ant, you know? <laughs> well, let's talk about some other parts of Hymenoptera, because ants ain't the only thing there. There's bees, wasps, and hornets. And in main, mainly in the case of my talk, I'll talk about bees, because I need something to compare to ants, specifically bumblebees. But a little bit um, of background on bees, hornets, and wasps. All of these guys, most of them are actually parasitic or um, not social, which means that they are solitary, they stay alone, they don't form colonies, and when they're parasitic, they actually go out, eat other bugs, or parasitize them, inject their eggs into them. It's kind of nasty, but it's pretty cool, actually. Bumblebees, their hives don't really, their colonies don't really last for that long, only around a year. The bumblebees themselves, they don't even live for that long either. But the really key, uh, key part um, that bumblebees, about bumblebees is their intelligence. Like, who would have thought that bugs could actually be smart? Like, if you look at a cockroach, there's not really much behind um, the cockroach's head. But if you look at a bumblebee, there's actually a lot going behind that, behind that head. Um, bumblebees can be trained to do tasks such as pull strings in return for honey or even play soccer, which is not really soccer. Um, he's actually just pushing a ball into a hole in return for some honey. But here's the thing about that. Even though it shows intelligence in such a small little guy with a tinier brain, um, they're still doing it for a reward. Nothing for itself. It's still trying to get honey for the colony. Just like an ant going out, hunting other insects to bring back food for a colony, the bee, bumblebee doing the exact same thing, just going out, just doing a trick to get honey for the colony. Honeybees, they go out, collect honey for their colony. Nothing for the individual, just like ants. So what really is the difference? Well, the truth is that bees do do stuff for themselves. In return for some personal enjoyment, they cut back a little bit of productivity. And here, bumblebees can actually play. Think of it, a tiny little bee acting like a dog, that's actually pretty cute. So the bumblebees, um, this was a study done in Queen Mary University in London. So bumblebees, they were put in a box where their colony was on one side, and there was some nectar on the other side, and then there was a pathway. And in this pathway, they had small wooden balls for the bees to roll around and have a little fun with. So the bees go, they fly, and it turns out at least like every single bee actually played once. And one bee even rolled the balls 44 times. So they were having tons of fun. And remember, the researchers didn't train them. They just put them in a box with a bunch of toys, and they started having fun for themselves. Like, this is mostly unseen in youth, social, in youth sociality because it really cuts back on the productivity. Ants wouldn't do this. They would not care. They would just go collect food, come back. But the bees, they're not really wasting time. They're taking time for themselves and having a lot of fun. So this is what researchers call play. They're doing something without a benefit. There is no benefit other than we could say enjoyment for the bee. Now let's relate ants and bees to human society. And what we can learn about these fascinating little creatures. So right now, humans, we behave a lot more like the ants. We think productivity, hard work, all this stuff is the main way to go. If we stop being productive, then how will we get stuff done? If we spend our time relaxing, having fun, we'll just be lazying around. Let's bring an example into this. My mother, she wakes up way early in the morning to cook food for us for lunch. And then she works at a job for so long, attending meetings and all that. Then she comes back, cooks more food for us, and then after cooking more food, she cleans the dishes, sweeps, so much stuff to do. And she believes that if she takes a break, then she'll have to keep on leaving more stuff later, and it just won't be good, won't be productive, and we, she won't get stuff done. And this leaves no time for herself to relax or even enjoy. So this is why we should be way more like the bees. The bees are still getting their work done. They're still going out, getting nectar, and coming back, just with the added benefit of some enjoyment and entertainment fun time. And then again, I don't really understand why we're being so, many, so much like ants, because humans ourselves, we are not ants. We don't work for a colony. We don't support a queen. Um, we don't go out. We, <laughs> uh, we don't go out. We don't solely work for everybody else. We work for ourselves and the people we love and care about. And what better way, honestly, what better way to make the people we love and ourselves happy than by being like a bee and actually having some fun. Thank you.